Questions of Doom. Hello and welcome back to another Questions of Doom. Today I am wearing a flat cap, as you probably noticed, and the main reason for this is that I simply spotted it on the way to making this morning's Question of Doom. And I thought, why not wear a flat cap? And uh, I must admit, it does pain me, though, to be wearing this indoors. <clears throat> but nonetheless, I thought I would share my flat cap. Now, uh, in Questions of Doom, as ever, I strive to answer questions that you send my way using the archaeosoup at gmail.com email address, as displayed on the YouTube channel for homepage, but also, as you will no doubt see at the end of this video. In answering these questions by video, I hope that the answer is made useful not only to the person who has asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same, or something similar, uh, at least. So, today's question comes from Sarah C. And um, Sarah C, uh, Sarah with an initial C afterwards, quite nice, um, has a very particular question about human remains. Mr. Soup. Hello, Sarah. Ms. Sarah. Uh, <clears throat> or Ms. C, actually, isn't it? Yeah, Mr. Soup, Ms. C. Uh, <clears throat> have you ever excavated human remains? I have not. I have a slight fear of doing so. Could you explain what it is like to dig up a human being and whether or not you had any trouble with it? Thank you, Sarah C. Well, uh, Sarah C, um, to answer your question, yes, I have excavated human remains um, in several instances, actually. And um, let me just say, first of all, you're no, by no means are you alone in having a bit of an issue or some... Um, queries as to what it is like to excavate human remains. Uh, for many archaeologists this is um, this is a bit of a, a line in the sand. Some uh, find it very difficult to deal with human remains possibly because they're facing their own mortality. Um, others find it difficult on the front of it and that they're actually fiddling around with what used to be a human being. And, uh, and others actually just find it um, uh, slightly nauseating essentially. They're, they're, they're a bit uh, squeamish at uh, actually handling uh, a human body or the remains thereof. So there are many different reasons to feel queasy about it and you're by no means alone uh, for doing so. But yes, I have in fact uh, dealt with human remains and um, I must admit I have had to deal, uh, create rather, come up with, sorry, certain um, mechanisms and techniques for getting through those experiences in a healthy uh, way. Um, now, first of all, let me just say, <clears throat> I remember on um, the common room wall back in uni, uh, there was a poster one evening that said, um, necro no, sorry, was it? Archaeology, colon, the only legal necrophilia. And then it was inviting you to go to a, a bone study class. So I think you've also got to have a bit of a sense of humour when it comes to dealing with hum hum human remains as well. Um, because um, there is a risk, very real risk that you may become so fixated upon what you're looking at that um, you potentially actually miss what it is that you are looking at, if you see what I mean. So um, <clears throat> I'll, I shall talk you through, not every single uh, body that I've ever done, but I'll, I'll actually I'll talk you through the first one I did and how it affected me, but also actually how uh, I came to deal with those issues. Now, my first ever human remains excavated um, were before I went to uni. I was, <clears throat> I was a fresh faced teenager and um, trusted with a trowel to uh, dig up um, a body in what used to be a churchyard. Um, so I actually took some photos because we, we, I asked very nicely and I was allowed and I framed um, those photos and you might be able to tell by the, uh, the placement of each of the photos that I wasn't the most adept at photography at the time. So I, I have, uh, I have the, the, the picture here, just one moment. So, <clears throat> this skeleton was a skeleton that I called Fred, and um, I excavated it with my then girlfriend, actually. How very romantic. Um, but Fred, um, uh, Fred taught me many different things about excavating human remains. I'll just talk a little bit about Fred. First of all, Fred, um, who may be a woman, incidentally, at the time uh, he or she wasn't, uh, wasn't easily sexable because of how the remains were buried uh, until uh, we did a bit more. Um, <clears throat> Fred 
uh, was actually uh, buried at some point um, in around about the, 12th, uh, the, th the, the 11th century um, AD. And um, he, uh, he or she um, had a subsequent, gra subsequent grave, grave um, cut in uh, above him or her. Uh, and this resulted actually in, um, in Fred's skeleton literally being sliced in two down its length. This is the reason why you'll see um, Fred only actually has one leg because the other leg uh, was taken away by, uh, probably, um, by people who were digging the grave that was ne right next to him or her, and uh, probably it was thrown into that other grave. Um, so Fred was a slightly shocking find in that sense. Um, I, it never really occurred to me that you might come across skeletons which have been sliced in two by grave diggers, and, uh, and I had to come up with a way of handling it. So first of all, I decided just to treat it as almost an anatomy lesson. I went through every aspect of the skeleton bit by bit um, and uh, very carefully troweling, brushing, tooth picking away uh, the mud from around um, him or her. Now, uh, this uh, very quickly became little more than a geometric exercise or, or for want of a, of a better way of putting it, uh, the old rhyme about the, uh, the, the, the leg bone being connected to the hip bone, etc. And um, after a day of doing that, I went back to the camp and I found myself thinking, well, actually, I, I'm not really respecting these remains, but also, actually, I'm sort of losing the fact that I'm, that I'm excavating a human being. And, and in doing that, I think, uh, actually, the excavation was starting to suffer because when it came to the ribs, um, I think I was actually missing, um, uh, missing some of the details of what had happened post-mortem in terms of... Um, the way the body sort of collapses in on itself. Um, <clears throat> because I was simply thinking about, well, okay, this shape here goes around to there and there, there. I wasn't actually thinking about how it had changed from being a living human being to being what it was that we were excavating. So the next day I went back uh, and um, decided to, um, to, to really f focus on who this person might have been. And along with a couple of other people, we came to the conclusion that this person actually was possibly a man, or probably a man, and might even have been a, uh, a vicar or priest, most of the point, living on site. And there was a, uh, it was essentially, it was the site of a small chapel um, as, uh, with, a, with an abbey nearby. So this person might, was probably, possibly a Cistercian priest, and the, uh, the placement of, um, uh, of certain aspects in the grave um, made you think, well, potentially... This was a, someone who was laid out with a bit of reverence. Um, but also, actually, the, the state of their teeth was remarkably good. They, ha they, they have obviously had a, an excellent diet. Um, so there were these different things. And we started to, to, to essentially talk about Fred in a way which, um, uh, which, which brought uh, him or her into, into our minds, into our, our consciousness. Um, but, but then you sort of start to feel very sad about it, very upset, and you're actually creating a complete myth. You're creating something which isn't actually real, and you start to feel very emotional about the, the, the ultimate, um, uh, the ultimate uh, destiny of this person, who you're imagining had this life, and then you, you, know, you fill in some blanks here and there, and before you know it, you know, you're excavating a bit of a cartoon character, someone who, who, uh, who, who you've uh, completely created and then um, probably was nowhere near as uh, tragic or indeed as heroic as you are imagining. So that wasn't necessarily very helpful either because um, it was a distraction. I was distracting myself from, again, from what was in front of me. I was, uh, I was um, yet again, buffering reality in some, in some way. So I went back to camp, <clears throat> thought about it again, um, had a bit of a chat with some other people over the campfire, and the next day returned um, to excavate. And uh, it's worthwhile saying that until this point, Fred had no name. <clears throat> it was simply Skeleton, you know, Skeleton B46-5 or something. Um, and uh, what, what, it's, what, what we decided to do was actually name the Skeleton. So we came up with Fred, not very imaginatively. Um, but this was essentially, this was the point, the whole point of naming the Skeleton Fred was to come up with a name which was fairly generic, but reminded us that it was a human being, so that we weren't, we didn't call it, you know, Cedric or, uh, you know, or, um, I don't know, uh, Ethelred, um, we simply called it Fred, because we wanted to be reminded that it was a human being we were excavating, this wasn't a geometric exercise, this wasn't some 
theoretical um, uh, discovery of, of an anatomy. This was actually this actually was once a human being. But also we weren't creating a myth around Fred. We weren't therefore um, enforcing our opinions onto the skeleton and in some way affecting how we excavated. Fred became a person who we were encountering and discovering as we excavated him or her. Um, and, and that, for me, was a very helpful way of doing it. It restored humanity to the remains, but at the same time didn't um, attempt to, to force um, an idea upon them. The remains actually were, were, were revealing themselves to us, or to, to me, as, um, as the excavation proceeded. So that, that's, um, that's sort of uh, probably the best case study I have in terms of that, that, that initial um, um, interaction, that initial conflict that you have almost when you come up against human remains um, is, is uh, and I think, sorry, that, that uh, that's probably the most helpful answer that I can give. Um, for me, I needed to think it was a human being. I needed to remember that this had been a human being. But also, as I say, I was very aware that I didn't want to just make something up. I wanted this, this skeleton to tell me something about itself. And it did over time. Um, and uh, bit by bit we gradually came uh, to, to other conclusions. Um, and uh, I won't go into those in great detail. But just by looking at the skeleton and thinking, how was this person living and what might they have been? So um, <clears throat> in terms of it being um, grim or gruesome, actually, I must admit, um, it never really occurred to me because mainly because actually they were bones um, that, 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 that this would have been a grim or gruesome thing to do. Um, this, again, this is probably a personal issue really, so I probably can't answer that for you, uh, Sarah C, um, in this instance. But uh, I, I think um, if I was ever to have, to have to deal with something that was still squishy, as it were, still a bit, a bit, you know, a bit uh, juicy, I don't think I would be able to handle uh, that. I think I might actually uh, be slightly freaked out. But uh, bones, for me personally, there's no, no problem with them. I'm quite happy with bones. Um, so, there you go. Um, I have talked a bit about this, rambled on, um, and ultimately, I suppose what I'm saying is that this question that you've asked is a, very, is a fairly personal question, actually. It's a question which every archaeologist, I hope, uh, will ask themselves before they do an excavation of human remain, remains. And every archaeologist will actually come up with a different answer to that question. So, in that spirit, fellow um, archaeosupians, archaeosupians, that's fantastic. It's like, almost like homo sapiens. Yes, I shall have to use that in some capacity. Um, so, archaeosupians, archaeosupians, um, please do uh, comment below on your thoughts and feelings, any um, issues that you come up, up with and up against when dealing with human remains. Um, I think uh, this, this is probably the best way to answer this question, is actually to invoke the community and to invoke you guys to actually uh, to, to, to share your thoughts and feelings because this is ultimately a very personal issue and a personal uh, answer in that sense. So once again thank you very much Sarah for asking the question it was a very worthwhile question as many of these questions are they're uh, very challenging very probing and very worthwhile answering so thank you for asking uh, and until next time bye bye. <laughs>